Rudo Shaniwa is a 35-year-old PA from South London. For the last six years, she's been working for a high-profile record company. Rudo's income is less than £30,000, but her debts have rocketed to £23,000. Because I live within my means, my wants and desires go way beyond my means. I'm loving that. She's got a thing about shoes and bags. This girl just can't stop shopping, or relax her beauty regime, or curb her expensive taste for champagne. She adores her bubbles. <laughs> She's remortgaged three times and her outgoings are triple her monthly income. Rudo's on a one-way ticket to bankruptcy. Rudo has been appalling with money. She's in debt up to her eyeballs and beyond. Over the last six years, Rudo's debt has taken over her life and she's finally realised that she needs help. Cue the experts. Lifestyle coach Jay Hunt will be serving up some money-saving tips. We've got to get from A to B without me losing you in a shop, so keep your eyes straight ahead, please. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry is a self-help expert who will help Rudo get to the source of her spending obsession. Seeing if we can investigate hidden pressures to spend money. Rudo Shaniwa is in monetary meltdown. If she can't stifle her cash flow, her debts will ruin her. Before meeting Rudo, the experts have been given keys to her one-bedroom flat to hunt for evidence of her serial spending. Jay will be searching for physical clues, while Benjamin will be looking for the psychological explanations for Rudo's shopping habits. I think being in my house and seeing the things that they see, I think they'll get the impression that I'm someone who, who likes to buy things. And I would imagine, and I, I you know, likes nice things. Oh, is that living room? Very bright in here. Quite a lot of photographs here. It's quite sweet. Yeah. In every single one, she's like the one beaming in the middle of a group of friends, you know, out partying. But there's more, is. look, over here. Oh, oh, look, sweet. sweet little thing. Who are these little ones? Isn't that cute? What's that? Dear Auntie Diddy, how cool that you're my godmother. I'm so excited because I hear from Mum that we share a common hobby, shopping. Well, obviously, it's a kind of standing joke. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about the shopping. Yeah. It hardly it's needs cleaning. any encouragement. You go into my bedroom and that will pretty much tell you what I spend a lot of my money on. There's three designer handbags here, Prada, two Gucci's. Oh. You're not going to get much change out of a thousand pounds for those. And just for those three? Yeah, just for those three. Oh. More Gucci. Oh, yes. No shopaholic, of course, would be without a pair of designer shades. Oh, look. At least there's only one. I knew it. I knew there would be storage below the bed. What have you got? Look, oh, more bags oh, with another bag in. I'm feeling like she's a bag On top of another lady. bag. On top of a handbag, on top of another bag. Jay, you're a woman. Tell me, is it normal to have this many bags? This is quite a bag. You know what's interesting? Look, bags mm -hmm. and shoes. That is her big <clears throat> thing. And if that isn't bad enough, mm -hmm. she's obviously gone for a triple whammy with these. Those are all the same. Yeah, I know. They're just but different look, colours. She hasn't even worn these ones. Too many bags and too many shoes, I feel, is that they're classic items of femininity. Mm. And they really display an interest in reinventing the feminine all the time. But to me, that just speaks of a lack of confidence of the inner feminine. In the kitchen, there's further signs of where she's splashing out. Water drinker. Yeah. Healthy. Oh, look. <laughs> a handbag. Yeah, but here's Sophie Dahl. She's, an, she's a model who's famous initially for being a kind of plus-size woman and then was famous for no longer being a plus-size woman. I wonder if that says anything about Rudo's body type or ambitions. Look, more water. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's ten bottles of water and all next to a blooming functioning tap that, yes, does work. Yeah. Free. That water is actually allegedly free. I'm mental. My spending is is not good. I freely admit that, you know, I live this sort of champagne lifestyle on lemonade money. 
What's down here? Oh, look. Oh, my goodness. Alcohol. Champagne. That's hilarious. Look um, at this. One of those? <laughs> Lipsticks or something? They're no. nail varnishes. Each one of those in between five and 15 pounds each. So that's yeah. a lot of money, you know, going so that, on nail varnish. That plastic bucket of nail varnish is actually more expensive than that champagne. It's the most expensive thing in the fridge. Gosh, Plastic, she's got no idea, has she, how to really. save money. Oh, this is her credit card statement. Cool, blimey. Present balance, £6,895,000 overdrawn. Oh, look. Nails. Soho look. House. That's her membership Groucho card. Groucho Club. Groucho Club. She's in the West look, End. She, monthly balance pays in bugger all. Armed with Rudo's bank statements, Jay and Benjamin slip away to pick through her finances. Rudo's shopping sprees went into overdrive six years ago when she began working amid the retail nirvana of High Street, Kensington a move that coincided with a split from her long-term boyfriend. My spending habits, I would probably say, went into overdrive as soon as I became really single. Every lunchtime, she's splurging out on whatever takes her fancy. Call it the magpie effect, I don't know. You see something, it kind of winks at you, you kind of wink at it, and you're like, uh-huh, I'm seeing ya. It's quite cute. You know, you have guilt. It's like looking at your best friend's husband. You know, you know, you're like, oh my God, I shouldn't be looking at this. I shouldn't be looking at this bag in that way. And it's all wrong and it's just very dirty and very seedy, but you just can't help it. You know, cause he's giving you the eye back. So you're like, oh, did anyone see that? You know? Does this come in any other color? Yeah. You know it's wrong from the moment you do it, but you just can't stop it. She has no relevance with money. It doesn't matter to her in the slightest. So therefore she'll just keep spending. And spend she does. Every fortnight, image conscious Rudo files away 50 pounds on her number one indulgence, false acrylic nails. And she loves her nights out. I go to a lot of private members clubs. Soho House, Groucho Club. They're exclusive, but that whole sex in the city thing of like, oh, I'm going to be single and I'm going to be cool. Being cool is costing Rudo £400 a year in private club membership, not to mention the £3,000 a year she spends on booze while she's there. Rudo is the most fabulous person to have because she's the first one to the bar, always bottle of champagne, no matter what. Champagne No matter the, the world occasion, world. it could be, it could be um, the end, end of the week or something yeah, like that. Oh, Friday. let's go and have some yeah. champagne. Yeah. Or I've just bought a new pair of shoes, let's go and have some champagne. <laughs> she adores her bubbles. <laughs> 47 gently. thank you very much. Try and check it out, Matt. With 9,000 on credit cards, a £15,000 loan and a £900 overdraft, Rudo uses one card to pay off another, something that's becoming increasingly hard to juggle. With Rudo, it's probably every six months when she comes and she announces that she's got money issues. Rudo's attempted before to kind of pull back on her spending spree and it's lasted, I think, for all of four weeks. And I know that may not be a pleasant thing to say, but Rudo has a four-week attention span. It's a classic case for the experts. They've got four weeks to reverse Rudo's lifetime of financial mismanagement, starting with the shock tactic. Cleaning up Rudo's messy spending will demand a strong brush with reality. Jay and Benjamin have returned to Rudo's flat to show her exactly what her spending amounts to, and they're not pulling their punches. Now, you, you lead the way. We've just got a couple of Come things to in. show you. Come on in. Don't be worried. There's nothing going to be very I'm weird. Very worried. Not the real Don't be thing. nervous. It'll all be fine. In you go, Rudo. <laughs> in you go. <laughs> now, have a look at this. <laughs> what do you think this could possibly represent to you? <laughs> A really kind of very artistic, weird exhibition. Well, it could be a modern installation, but in fact, there are 3,000 bottles of nail varnish here, and every bottle represents a pound that you have spent in the last year on nails and beauty. That's 3,000 pounds over a year, which is in fact a ninth of your total salary. 
I actually feel quite disgusted. In fact, really disgusted. I really hadn't a clue I was spending that much. Well, I'm glad it's a shock. I'm going to hold back the tears. For... Okay. But I'm pretty close to it, actually. I don't want you to cry yet till you've seen the kitchen. Oh, oh no. yeah. Save the waterworks for later. The kitchen is awash with Rudo's liquid assets. <sighs> Have a good look around. Don't panic. Now, do you know what this could possibly be? Yeah, it's my water fetish. Very good, well done. So this is two litres of water that you drink every day, which makes 730 litres of water a year. Do you know how much that costs? A lot of money. Well, we think it costs £2,190 every year. When you say it's <laughs> nearly 10% of your post-tax income. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money considering that it is flowing into your house for no money at all. How much does it cost you to turn on the tap? I know, but I just... I've tried tap water and I... Don't like it? Don't like the taste of it. Could you grow to like it when you <laughs> see all of this? Which is worse, tap water or debt? Um. <laughs> I was going to say tap water. <laughs> well, definitely date. Obviously, up to now, the answer has been tap water. I know. But now we're looking to change, perhaps. Yeah, not perhaps, definitely. Okay. I have to change. After everything had been done and, you know, after the horrible revelations that had been made to me, I just spent a lot of time kind of just thinking things over and kind of, you know, kind of going back, trying to go back a year and two years back and thinking, you know, and, and trying to pinpoint this moment in time that I kind of lost control. The fact that Rudo's parents both died before she was 30 has undoubtedly played a part in her overspending. It's time for another tough lesson, as Rudo discovers just how much she's been wasting. Jay and Benjamin are getting her back to basics with a week-long course of cold turkey. What we want to talk to you about, really, is how much money do you think you get through in an average week? And bear in mind, we're talking about non-essential spending. Not including your mortgage, not including your yeah. bills, but stuff that you could really choose to spend oh. or not. A hundred to two hundred. Is that your final offer? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. I'm not here to try to upset you or humiliate you, but it is a little bit more. I know. And I'm going to tell you exactly no, how no, much more, know. exactly how much more. Rudo, you spend each week on non-essential items £624. Oh, my God, that's disgusting. Well, it's quite a lot of money. It is. Oh, that's awful. This much money every week and... Don't forget the four pounds. Four pounds. The thing is with you, Rudo, is that a lot of it doesn't register. How many times in a week would you actually use cash versus using your card? I suppose I'd use cash for anything maybe about under a fiver. Right. But if mm. it's over a fiver, then I'd definitely hand the card over. So when you see it in cash, does it make a difference? Yeah, it makes a hell of a difference. So if we put you on a uh, cash budget for next week, do you think that would be a good idea? It would be brilliant. What we'd like you to do is just take seven days to do what we call the cold turkey process. And there is a point to doing this. And the point is to negotiate with you now as to how much money you think you could honestly live on for one week. I suppose if I'm being honest, I could probably live on a fiver. <laughs> for a week? <laughs> Fantastic. Done. Done. We've got to give you enough money so that, you know, it's reasonable. I, I would say £30 yeah. would be a tough challenge, but if you're really willing to give it a go and it sounds like you are, then yeah. I think £30 would be fair. So you've got a couple of things to think about while we're not here. Meanwhile, I'm going to hand over to you the princely sum of £30, which is seven days' worth of your fun time for the rest of the week. Looks like a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't spend it all at once. No. You going to be all right? Yeah, yeah, I've got to be OK. 
I think Rudo is somebody who's tried herself to break habits, to realise why she's spending so much, to get herself out of doing things like that. But I think her focus was in the wrong place. And I think that what she has really, really realised is that drastic measures are needed to halt her in her tracks and break those patterns, rather than trying occasionally to do little things that she's not really going to notice. It's day one of the cold turkey week, and in the past, Rudo's been spending money like water. Bottles of the stuff. With over £2,000 a year going down the toilet, it's top of the hit list. While I'm getting used to getting drinking the tap water, I like putting it in the bottle and keeping the label on because it makes me think I'm drinking <laughs> like the proper water. Working in central London has played havoc with Rudo's spending and the temptation to shop is literally all around her. We work in High Street, Kensington, so we're surrounded by shops that all sell. She really needs to be in Milton in. Keynes <laughs> on a roundabout or something. <laughs> it is it's hard. I mean, I think it's going to be probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do, live on 30 quid a week. Yeah, there are just so few things out there that are under a pound. It is just not funny. It's day two, and Rudo's lunchtime spending routine has ground to a halt. With a ban on £100-a-week blowouts in the M&S food hall, Rudo's stepping into uncharted territory as she stocks up on a week's supplies in a low-cost supermarket. Ooh, look at this. Actually, it looks quite nice in here. Look at that, Goliath. And that's 45p, 45p for that. But, I mean, look at it, look at the balls. They look just like fairy liquid. It's Magnum. And we all know what Magnum was. He was big and he was strong, and he did the job. Right, I'm gonna have to start making my own lunches. Sliced turkey, the slices are massive. I mean, honestly, it looks like my granny cut them, and she was blind. <laughs> Can't see the pass. I don't know how much that is. I think it's for free. There's no price. I think they're giving it away today. Oh, my God, it's 19p. Oh, that's amazing. Do you know what? I'm actually starting to think I was being robbed earlier. Robbed. Blind. Cool, thanks very much. Success! Rudo's managed to get her weekly shop down to £12.20, more than £80 less than her usual bill. The thrill of splashing out the readies is being replaced by the buzz of pinching the pennies. One thing that is just fantastic for my budget is turkey. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. I'm going to have turkey coming out of every orifice of my body. I'm sort of happy, but I'm kind of shocked and worried because I'm thinking, you know, A, how have I managed to spend so little? And B, you know, is that £20 going to still be enough for, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday? <sighs> In typical Rudo style, she's embraced the cold turkey challenge with both hands. But in the long term, can she make it stick? Despite Jay's practical advice for saving money, it's vital she understands what's driving her compulsion to spend, spend, spend. Buying things gives Rudo um, a comfort and a buzz, and it, when she's insecure or feeling insecure, a, a little purchase probably, you know, picks her up. Benjamin Fry has been through therapy himself and now uses that experience as a self-help writer and consultant. He wants Rudo to examine the deeper emotional issues that influence her reckless spending. In the experience, especially a compulsive or an addictive experience, there's always an emotional component. And it's my task to really try to figure out what that is. OK, on the surface, she's just buying stuff. But what does that translate to on an emotional level? Is she trying to fill a gap that's in her life with the clothes? Or do the clothes help her to physically transform herself? Does she feel that she's not beautiful enough? Often this is the case with adults, that our behaviour actually represents a need unresolved from our childhood. 
Rudo and her five siblings were raised in Zimbabwe. Rudo lost both of her parents over five years ago. Two of her sisters still live abroad, but she's very close to her other siblings who live nearby in South London. Benjamin seeing her to discover what life was like while she was growing up. You know, my parents, I think, had quite a hard life. Right. They also came from very, very poor backgrounds. Right. And then their situations changed with regard to money. But, you know, even though they had, at some points, they had money, they weren't able to deal with it. And, oh, really? Yeah. So there were financial issues in your family as well? Definitely. Classic examples uh, would be, you know, if, if my parents had an argument, she'd sort of, like, be screaming and shouting and say that, you know, she was going to she was going to go and, you know, sort of hurt him sort of thing. She would go and spend loads and loads of money uh, on just stuff that we, that, you know, I don't know, maybe she didn't need. So it was a weapon? Yeah, she'd definitely use it as a weapon when, mm. when she couldn't get her way sometimes. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, towards the end, she'd be spending money that we didn't, we didn't have. Yeah. Um, so money is a weapon when she can't get her own way and she's spending money she didn't have. Yeah. Does that remind you of anyone? <laughs> Me. Who do you think um, you might be using this spending as a weapon against? I feel it's more about my mother. Having struck upon an important link between her late mother's spending and Rudo, Benjamin wants to investigate their relationship further. I felt in, you know, throughout my childhood that I was not... You know, my parents weren't, unfortunately, very good at making us feel sort of very wanted or very sort of... In the family? Yes, within right. the family unit. So you didn't feel accepted by your parents? No. Basically? No. Well, that'll do it then, won't it? <laughs> you know, I'd get a lot, you know, from my parents, you know, why can't you be more like... Oh, right. And so there was a lot of that. And what sort of things did they say? You know, for my mother, my mother sometimes, the way I looked, I think maybe as a child she yeah. didn't perhaps like the way I looked. So looks were important? Yeah. It wasn't just like, could you achieve more at school? No, looks were very important. Oh, really? I was overweight as a child, right. so, you know, she would always sort of, sort of pick on me, you know, I was... You know, she would say that, you mm. know, I... You know, that I wasn't very attractive or, you know, I didn't look oh. a certain way, so she would always pick up on things like that. That's so. not nice. Your own <laughs> mum, is it? So you really got from that upbringing a sense of uh, struggling to be accepted, struggling to belong, and no positive role model in terms of money. And what worries me is that we could give you all the practical advice in the world, but underneath that, if you're constantly left with the feeling that you need to do something to improve your chances of being accepted. Um, very often that something is probably going to involve spending money. I've always had this underlying feeling that the spending is not getting me what I want. And so I've, mm. I feel like, you know, my mission is becoming very futile. I'm, I'm chasing after something I'm never, you know, I'm looking to fill this hole that I'm never going to fill. Could you articulate exactly what you think the hole is? I kind of feel like the hole is the place where love lives. Definitely. And there just hasn't been enough love. No. Which is pretty sad, isn't <laughs> it? It's very sad. Um, and I think, if I can put it in such a weird way, I think you spend over it. I think you spend over that sadness. Definitely. And I think it's better to be sad and keep your money in your wallet. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah? <laughs> Do you mind being sad? I don't like being sad, but, mm. but the truth is I'm always sad, so I suppose it's just something I'm quite comfortable with. Well, the truth is very healing. It's very cathartic. And I think you often make a choice between effectively crying or laughing. And I think, you know, what's happening now is probably better for you in the long term mm. than laughing.
I think it's actually a very good sign that Rudo was able to share her tears, share her sadness, because I think for her the sadness and holding on to the sadness is a big part of why she has to behave dysfunctionally in other ways. And for her to be able to sit there with me and share the sadness to that degree today with someone she doesn't know very well is really a very good sign. I'm glad this is all coming out. You know, I had a good cry last night and stuff and, you know, sort of went back and, you know, realised that... Because I'm always, I always, you know, because I just started to grieve for this childhood that I never had. I find it very difficult to understand how... how a, how a mother could you know, be so hurtful. It's just, for me, it's like, the, it's the ultimate letdown. And I've, I suppose I've never really dealt with that. But it's made me, you know, having been able to sleep on it and think about stuff. I got up today and I'm more determined than ever. Benjamin agrees with Rudo that her spending is an act of rebellion and that she needs to calm down her lifestyle to set up some long-term change. She's now five days into her cold turkey week and for the first time in years, with no money for cabs and booze, Rudo faces a Friday night, home alone. Oh, yeah, Captain. I can hear you. It's the last day of cold turkey, and Rudo has shown surprising initiative. I sold a pair of shoes to my sister. Uh, they were just kind of lying around, and I hadn't worn them, and they'd been in the box for ages, and I, know, I remember she said she liked them. This means she's now got the financial muscle to make the ultimate sacrifice. Rudo's having the false acrylic nails that she's had glued on for the past 15 years ground off her fingers for good. I once had my nails taken off when I was trying to cut back and I thought, this is just ridiculous. And, you know, my friends were like, listen, you know, Rudes, you really don't need to have your nails done. So I was like, OK, OK, we'll give this a go. No biggie, no biggie. I think I had three days, three days with my own nails. I just looked like my hands, they just looked shocking. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and I couldn't handle it. So three days, tops, and then I came back and had my nails done. I have no idea what it's like for perhaps a drug user to come off a drug, but I could probably liken it to that. Rudo sails through cold turkey with flying colours, but the challenge of a long-term budget is a scary prospect. In the past, her addictive nature has sabotaged all attempts to change. I'm feeling a little bit kind of apprehensive in myself because I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to, if I'm going to be able to do this. You know, because it's all very well, you know, you, you have a week and you get stuff and you make all the changes, but, you know, life is made up of lots of weeks. Am I really going to be able to do this, you know, six, six months down the line? Seven days ago, Rudo Shaniwa, a 35-year-old PA working for a well-known record company, was spending over £600 a week on non-essential items. With her debts amounting to over £23,000 and her love of shopping showing no sign of waning, things were getting out of hand. A week later, and Rudo's been living on just £30. Benjamin is also beginning to make headway in helping Rudo understand where the root of her spending addiction lies. However, a budget is for life, not just for seven days. And so Jay and Rudo meet up to tighten the purse strings. You've done your seven days cold turkey. How's it been? It's been very, very difficult. Very difficult. In fact, it's just been hysterically difficult. <laughs> um, I have, I've gone through all the money. Right. There's not a penny left. And did you overspend at all? I didn't right. overspend. Okay. But it was very hard. And how did you feel about telling your friends this is what you were doing? Have you socialised with them during the week? <laughs> not at all. Haven't seen one. <laughs> Haven't seen a soul in a week. <laughs> you know. Jay's got to get tough as she breaks down Rudo's new monthly allowance. So on the beauty front, teeth whitening, fifty pounds a month. Smile. 
<laughs> See, they're white enough. Well, that's going to naught, funnily enough, so you won't be doing that again this month. <laughs> Taxes at the moment, the current expenditure is £120 a month. Now that has gone back to naught. Yeah. What it's saying is because you can't get a taxi doesn't mean you can't go out to something. Yeah. It's just about choices. It does seem quite drastic when you look down here. It's like zero, 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 zero. But the reason why, Rido, you know, when we look at the bottom, you know, overspending by £3,213 a month, it's got to come from somewhere. Just because Rudo's living on a shoestring doesn't mean a lifetime of microwave lasagna. Jay has come up with some cheaper alternatives to the £400 Rudo was spending every month in restaurants. There we go. Well navigated, Rudo. No money spent on that trip. Excellent. Are you aware of why I brought you here to have supper at 6.15? No. <laughs> Look at me as if I'm mad. What I wanted to introduce you to is the promotions that a lot of restaurants do, which is called Beat the Clock. And what it means is, whatever time you turn up, generally before 7.30, that is the amount that you're going to pay for your meal, right? So we came 6.30, we're paying £6.30 for our meal. People behind probably got here 10 minutes earlier, they're paying £6.20. But what it means is, is that if you get here earlier, and have your dinner, so meet people after work, have early supper, it means you're not having to pay half as much as you would later on. Oh, wow. What do you think about That's that? brilliant. Another idea for you, you know, if you're seeing girlfriends and things, might be to sort of do early supper in a movie night. Yeah. And, you know, if you're in a cinema watching a movie, that's two hours for eight pounds. Yeah. When have you ever been in a bar for two hours and <laughs> spent eight pounds, Rudo? But it's, do you see what I mean? It's, yeah, no, I like it. Sounds really good. Really good. I, you know, I just don't have the money anymore to spend out on these huge nights out. So this is definitely going to be my only option. For Rudo, a night out drinking with friends has been an expensive pastime. Like her shopping, Rudo's been using alcohol to avoid dealing with the traumas of her past. Unfortunately, the spiralling cost of her big nights out is only making matters worse. As the evening goes on, we normally end up getting pretty hammered most evenings. And she just wants to be everyone's friend. It doesn't matter what it costs. It's money's never an object. Put it on the visa, you don't pay for it then. Conversations I've had with her about, I can't believe how much money I spent last night. I'm on cereal and sandwiches for the rest of the month now. I can't afford to eat anything. You know, we laugh about it, but of course it is serious. Rudo knows it's serious, but how do you cut down on spending while still enjoying a drink with your mates? So, Rudo, I've brought you to a bar, which is a familiar place, I know, judging from the £269 a month that gets spent on alcohol. And when you're out, what do you generally drink? A lot sort of wine and champagne. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> Economical, then, when we're out. It's what I like. <laughs> OK. I know, but obviously I realise now that's just crazy. I was going to talk to you today about cocktails because it's generally, I think, easier to go for a completely different drink than it is to start cutting down, especially if you're used to drinking wine and champagne. Obviously, you can't have half a glass of wine or half a glass of champagne. It's just kind of not going to work. Okay. And you can pace yourself with water. Do you feel pressured when you're in a group of friends that they want you to drink? An interesting point, because I have gone out to places with my friends, and if I've ordered, say, like a cranberry juice or something, they yeah. can immediately see yes. that they there's no alcohol in there, and then the pressure starts. Because you can order a non-alcoholic mojito or a Virgin Mary. Yeah. Nobody's going to know at exactly. all. But you will, because it's going to be literally half the price when you take the alcohol out. Yeah. Would this be something that you would ever do at home? Not that you are ever at home, but if you had friends over, would you think of making something like this for them? Yeah, definitely. Because part of the thing is not to stop you going out, but to find a way that we could increase your socialising at home. They want to bring a bottle of vodka and turn them into alcoholic cocktails, fine, but you're not having to fork out. Exactly. For a bit of inspiration, Jay's enlisted the help of Francisco, a West End bartender, to run through a non-alcoholic mojito. We use fresh mint, crushed ice, a little bit of apple juice, passion fruit syrup, sugar syrup, a bit of lime juice. There you go. A nice apple mojito. Rudo has always plumped for pricey drinks in upmarket bars. 
But with Jay's help, there's a simpler alternative much closer to home. I'm making a couple of cocktails and trying to follow the mojito that um, Francisco taught me. So now I've got two jugs. Ta-da! My very first cocktails! <laughs> Done some canapes and things. So I thought if I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna make it a proper Rudo house, you know, you wouldn't go to Sir House and not have the bar menu. All the canapes and all the stuff with the cocktails. I didn't buy any booze because my friends, I said to them, if you want booze, you pick it up yourself. But I picked up all of that for 27 quid. I could have spent like 27 quid on a round. And for 27 quid, I'm getting all of this. And I'm just so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am. I've got my own drinks. <laughs> Well, there's no alcohol in these yet, so I'm not going to... All right, I'll go and get the cheese. Nothing. Just taste it first, for God's sake. <laughs> Jesus, I know I haven't got a degree in bar Actually, skills. Actually, it's not bad. It's pretty cool. It just needs some booze in it, and we'll be so. Shush, what do you think? Oh, Jackie, that's fantastic, and oh, so shut cheap. Up. Tell the truth. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I think this is this has really been a wake up call. This is the make or break sort of thing and she knows if this doesn't work, nothing's gonna work. She's got to the point now where she's actually I suppose examined her life and her person and um, said like, you know what, I wanna change. Let's make another jug. It's two weeks into Rudo's new cash-conscious way of life and things are starting to fall into place. I just don't give up easily. That's just not me. I don't know. Something inside me was just saying, keep going, keep going, keep going. I can't go back to the person I was. High-living Rudo had built up a debt of over £23,000 through years of indiscriminate spending. But now budget-conscious Rudo has logged onto an internet auction site hoping to redress the bank balance. I'm going to put my Gucci bag on, my little Gucci number. See, look, exactly the same bag. We have 800 quid's worth of bags here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's my Prada bag. Gucci, Prada, Burberry, Pochanel. Not really feeling that one anymore. That tweed's a bit out. Honestly, I don't know why the heck I bought that. I really don't. Oh, I forgot under the bed. Got about these. Oh, look at that, a bag in a bag. <laughs> oh, it's still got the tag on it. It's <laughs> just gonna take photos of all of this and put it on eBay and see, see who wants my stuff. That's it, ta-da! Sorted. Rudo is starting to take all the right practical steps towards spending less money, but there's a lot of long-term temptation heading her way. Benjamin wants to explain a bit about the psychology of shopping. He hopes this will help Rudo appreciate how stores trigger emotional responses that persuade shoppers to part with their cash. Rudo, I brought you up here above the hustle and bustle of High Street Kensington to see a different perspective on people and as they shop. You can actually observe them observing the shopping. And what you perhaps don't realise is that so much thought and science and energy and money goes into the simple presentation that you look at. It's designed to make you go in there and spend your money. Want to go shopping? <laughs> I definitely don't want to go shopping. OK, you want to go into a shop? Yeah, I... Yeah. To see going... how it is with this new idea? Yeah. I'm going to become like this ninja shopper, <laughs> you know, and be armed with all these tools, ready to sort of, you know, sit with things about me. I'm like, stay away, dress. Yeah. I'm ready for you. You see, here we are going up to the ladies' wear, which involves coming all the way in that entrance. So that from here, to get out without spending money, you have to go back past the whole load of stuff. If the stuff you were really interested in was just inside the door, then what good would that be? You could buy it and leave. So here we are, really right in the womb of the shopping experience. Your eyes have lit up. You're getting all kind of excited. It's a right side of the brain experience. It's a sensual experience. Look at your smile. 
I identify with everything you say because yeah. as you're saying it, I'm, that's exactly what I'm feeling, so I can't mm. deny it. Another really interesting thing, there's no mirrors at the beginning of the shot. So even if you did find something there and you wanted to kind of look at it against your skin, you actually have to walk to the back of the shop to look at yourself in it, by which time you're in. See how they've been getting you? Yeah, because, you know, that's always, always a, a thing on my mind. I'm always thinking, where are the mirrors? Where there are the mirrors? Go. And the mirrors are always at the back. There you go. Of course, then, what's the choice? You either go back out through that birth canal that you came so pleasantly in through and you're rejected into the street, just thrown out into the harsh reality of life with nothing, or you go out there with a comfort blanket. Right. And look around you. Do you see any nice comfort blankets? Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't this be a help if we could just leave holding on to this? It's so easy to buy, isn't it? You just give them a little credit card and worry about it later. So let's practice leaving a shop without buying anything, shall okay. we? Okay. That's an escalator that goes down. Do you think you can bear it? Yeah. You've tried nothing on. You want to go for it? I can do it. Come on, Ruda. Ben and Jay's advice has worked wonders for Rudo, but clearing her debt will take years. Sticking to a budget is something that is quite alien to Rudo, and previous attempts have all taken a dive. Although she insists she's ready to change, her nearest and dearest remain sceptical. Having lost both parents within a year of each other, Rudo now seeks approval from her older sister, Matey, and is keen to convince her that she's making genuine progress. But I genuinely feel that I have... Wait, how, OK. You, do you sincerely think that you can keep this up? Yes. For, for a year? Yes. Really? Really. Mm -hmm. But I really just feel that this is just... You know, the changes I'm going to make are going to be kind of like for a long time. And I'm ready to make those changes. Before I started all of this, I was kind of like, mm, not too sure. But I've just learned a lot more about myself. What in your behaviour is going to change? I'm not buying stuff anymore to make me happy. Before I used to buy a lot of stuff to make me happy, just to fill a little gap. But now... You can I honestly just... say that that's not the case now. Yeah, honestly. And you, you know me so well, that's why you're kind of going, well, you know what, Rude's a year down the line. And I well, totally... no, yeah, I'm being, I'm being generous with a year. I'm actually putting you at Easter, <laughs> actually. <laughs> this is real. I just, I've just learned a little bit more about myself and I, I like it. You know, hopefully four months from now I'll be able to kind of go, you know, matey, you know. I'm halfway. And also, well, you know what, I kind of there. want, I know, I know I shouldn't be doing this for other people. In the, this is for myself and it really is for myself. But I do just want, like, I want you guys to be proud of me also, you know. You know, to be honest, I love my friends, I really do. And they've been very good, but... You know, the most important thing to me is the family. You know, you know, considering that sometimes growing up we were quite fragmented. It's very, Whoa. it's very important to me. But matey, it's very important. You know, everyone's different. I know, but for me personally, it's very important that I have you guys in my life. I need you. I really, I, I need you. It's now three weeks into Rudo's new financially improved lifestyle. And on a practical level, she's gone from spending £624 to £50 a week. More importantly, she's starting to deal with the deep-rooted pain associated with her turbulent relationship with her mother. Both Benjamin and Jay feel they're making headway with Rudo, not just with her fast and loose spending, but also with her issues from the past. We've got in quite deep with some of the stuff with her family. She's never really got much nurturing or support or affirmation from her parents at all. Um, and I think this has really weighed her down emotionally. But a lot of the shopping she now relates to trying to pick herself up from that. I mean, everything I've talked to her about, she's been very open. Yeah. That's what I really like about her. I think her confidence level really went up after she'd done the cold turkey because she did really well on it. And I think that gave her the confidence to think this is a massive thing I didn't think I could do. I think she felt that she was trapped in this constant spending pattern. And I think she is quite open to looking at different ways of living her life because she's reassessing what she actually wants out of it.
In their first meeting, Rudo admitted to Benjamin that she'd had an incredibly destructive relationship with her mother. Benjamin believes this may be linked to the way she spends money. For Rudo, shopping was a shortcut to happiness, a quick distraction from a long-term need. Benjamin wants to talk to Rudo about ways to fill that emotional void. So what did you want to do when you were younger? I can remember my first career choice um, at the age of seven was, uh, was to be a nun. All right. Clearly that's gone right out the window. Well, you could still be a nun. Make a great nun. Yeah, I don't really know what nuns do these days. Well, they take a vow of poverty to start off with. <laughs> what about later on when you got a bit older? I just think I just wanted to get out of house. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to leave home. What about um, your passions? What, what was it that really moved you? I, no, I have a very, you know, creative side. Yeah. You know, I always have done as a child. But, you know, that side of things sort of growing up, you know, we were sort of led to believe that, you know, that kind of stuff doesn't pay the bills. So what's happened to that creativity? I had to go, really, because yeah. I was awarded a place at uh, college, musical college. Right. But my parents didn't think it was suitable. So you were good enough for your music teacher, you were good enough for the admissions board, but then you took that triumph back to your parents and they're like, so what, it's only singing. What's the point of that? You're not going to make a living doing that. Exactly. And that must have really crushed you. Yeah, it was. It was very upsetting. It's quite ironic, though, because you are actually working in the music industry. It's kind of like you say you don't dwell on it and you left it behind. But it doesn't really seem like you did because you work with the singers. Yeah, I suppose so. You see, I'd like to see you up on a stage singing a song. Not for a living, but just for fun. Because I think that that would nurture you. That would be Rudo nurturing Rudo. You know, I would do those things. I'll pop, I could do those things. Mm. But, you know, it also brings up the flip side for me, oh. the other very emotional side, which is that I never feel that I'm good enough. Oh, really? And I feel that I'm never really good enough in okay. everything I do in life. Were you told that when you were younger? I think Rudo's mother stopping her taking up her singing scholarship is a real wound in Rudo's childhood. And it does sound very much to me like it's a place where she can locate the idea of giving up on herself. Because there's something about Rudo that speaks of a sort of self-abandonment. I think when your own mother is the one that really stifles your dreams in life, it's very, very hard to bounce back from and to feel confident about yourself. And something I'd want Rudo to do is to try to find a practical way to reclaim herself, being it singing lessons or joining a choir, whatever it is that appeals to her. It would really help her emotionally work through what she lost in that time and reclaim some of herself, because this is about getting back the part of her that her mother really threw away. You know, I sort of now associate Benjamin with pain. <laughs> so every time he's, he's around or I know he's going to be around, I think, oh, God, you know, I'm going to have to start dealing with really sort of emotional stuff. And all this sadness, you know, there's more sadness that's being brought up to the surface. That's really what it is. So I feel kind of very, I feel a bit like an open sore. It's been 21 years since Rudo's late mother stopped her going to music college. Her chat with Benjamin has made Rudo dwell on what she was forced to give up and inspired her to put things straight. It's been years since she sang and her vocal cords are rusty, but Rudo's fired up and has booked herself in for a singing lesson. Oh, so you're going to go, uh huh, strumming my pain with his fingers and keep it up. Okay, right. Strumming my pain with his. No, am I talking? Yeah, but the, 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 it's good that you're blurring the lines between the two because that's what we want. Yeah. Singing lesson was absolutely fantastic. She was the best singing teacher I have, I can honestly say, I've ever had. Um, not too 
too bad, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, where it could go to, but it was really nice. It was kind of it was a warm feeling. Rubbing my pain with his finger. Singing my life. Singing my life with his words. For me, it's going to be hard putting it into that category of need and want, you know, because I just feel so good at the moment after doing this lesson that I just think this is something that I need. Not, it's not a want. Drumming my pain. Good, keep going. If I have to sell more stuff on eBay, if I have to sell my furniture, I'm going to have to do that because this is something that I need. Benjamin and Jay have talked to Rudo about ways in which he can get back on track on both a financial and emotional level. For Rudo, the path to change has not always been easy. On Jay's advice, she's getting a change of scenery to talk things through with Kathy, her oldest friend from Zimbabwe. For less than Rudo would spend on a night out in the West End, she's traveling to Brussels to get a little distance from her life back in London. I must say, it is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Just visually, do you think? Kath and I, we've been able to catch up and, you know, and obviously there's always loads of stuff we can catch up on because we go back such a long way. When, you know, when they said, look, you know, are you up for the challenge of trying to sort things out? I was absolutely 100%. I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this. You know, just the aim is soul. get rid of the credit cards, just get rid of loads of stuff. And I'm still thinking like that. Well, like even things with your nails, you know, because I look at your nails now and just think, well, I actually think that your nails, as they are, are more beautiful than the nails that you were spending a fortune on. No, I must say, I'm very impressed the way you have changed. Yeah. There is that thing of having to prove to other people, I have to prove it to myself. I don't want to let myself down, you know. Despite the fact that London is awash with galleries and museums, Rudo's obsession with shops has always taken precedence. Away from that temptation, she's able to re-explore her childhood love of music. Tiny little chairs. Oh, these are... Right, so this is the African section. Uh -huh. You know, this is all, it's all very familiar because, you know, when you, to, when, yeah, when you go up to Victoria Falls and stuff and, and they do the... The musical display. Mm. It's really cool. I love all, you know, going into the art galleries. It's just been very calm and very sort of cultured, and I feel quite grown up, really. <laughs> Instead of running around in a bar trying to get to service, you know, I'm mean, just walking around, and it's just, it's just been a very calming experience. This idea of yours. Well, not mine, it's a treat for me. But I can't get over the fact that for 59, well, 59, 50, 60 quid, we've had this whole day. Absolutely brilliant. And I, you know as well as I do that if we'd been in London, mm. do a whole day like this, mm. how much would I have gone through? About double that. I think that's pretty amazing. It is good. Anyway, here's to Brussels. Anyway, yeah, cheers. I've had a lovely day. It's been too. Nice it's been great. It's exactly one month since Rudo set out on her path to financial and emotional security. Jay and Benjamin have returned to where it all started to see how she's got on. Oh, look. Get me through to lunchtime. Very nicely served. <laughs> Lovely. Mmm. Oh, oh, God, these are really good, Rudo. I know, it's a bit, it's probably probably mm. a little bit too tart, but... No, I like it. I just think it's so weird that four weeks ago, we were all sitting here and going through your money mm. and you were not believing that you were spending £624 <laughs> <laughs> a week. And it's, it's quite odd, cos it has been such a massive change. It was just very instant. It was mm. an instant. I knew it wasn't even thinking about it at all. Yeah. No sort of going to denial. I was just like, right, that's it. But I just, I do feel that for me, the hardest part is going to be able to, you know, once this is finished, it's just to keep, keep going. going. Yeah. That's where the real um, 
that's the hardest part for me. That is hard. I think it's about setting yeah. dealable targets and not being unrealistic to keep your interest. Because I think it is that thing where it would be easy to slip back, you know, a handbag here or trousers there yeah. or a couple of manicures suddenly or in a three fortnight. Three pairs of matching shoes here. Yep. Or, uh, <laughs> a bag and then, in a bag and a bag there. Yeah. And suddenly you're sort of stuffed again. I, uh, but half the battle is that you're aware of that. It really is always in my head. I mean, the need yeah. and want. This is the first time I've ever seen you without <laughs> nail polish on. And it looks say. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've come off. I'm not fussed about it. I don't mm. freak out about it. Yeah. And it's really weird because as I'm going through this process, this is how I gauge it. As they grow down, this is how I'm growing. Oh, I see. So that's, that's how good. I yeah. look at them every day. And as the new, when the new nail comes through properly, it's that'll be movement. like the new me. It'll oh. be like the birth of a new me. So when the nails are fully grown out, how are you going to manifest the new you and how are you going to keep it going? That's well, really... there'll always be a reminder just looking at yeah. my own nail will always, always be a reminder of it's what great. I've gone through. Well, we're really glad, aren't we, yeah. that we've met you. Because honestly, Rudo, really, both of us feel that, you know, you've worked really, really hard. You really do have the tools to carry on with this. And I have full confidence that you are going to. Well done, seriously. It's been really rewarding working with you. And I think you'll go from strength to strength. <laughs> Take care, Rudo. Thanks, Dad. You've been brilliant. And, um, yeah, I'm going to miss you. Yeah. Uh -huh.